Hello everyone, this is topic 3.10 solubility. This is taken from AP Chemistry College Board. In this video, I'll be talking about the solubility of polar as well as non-polar compounds in various kinds of solvents and the reasons that why some of the compounds are soluble and why some are insoluble. So let's start. Based on the polarity, molecules can be classified into non-polar and polar. The polarity of the molecule arises because of the dipole moment and which is due to the geometry of the molecule as well as the electronegativity between the atoms. Now, the examples of the molecules which are non-polar can be homonuclear diatomic molecules. Homonuclear diatomic molecules are the molecules in which there is only one type of atom, but the two atoms are basically attached with a covenant bond. So the examples can be H2, O2, Cl2. Polyatomic molecules in which the bond polarity gets cancelled because of the geometry, for example, carbon dioxide, BF3, CCl4, etc. Other type of molecules which are non-polar can be hydrocarbons, alkanes, alkenes, alkynes, benzene as well as benzene derivatives. These molecules are non-polar. Now let's see the molecules which can be polar. They can be heteronuclear diatomic molecules. So here it was homonuclear and here it is heteronuclear. So the examples can be HF, HBr, etc. And also the polyatomic molecules which have asymmetric shape due to which the bond polarity doesn't get cancelled. The examples can be water, SF4, etc. Apart from these hydrocarbons, there are some organic compounds which have following functional groups and due to these functional groups, these molecules are polar. For example, ROR. ROR is an ether. Then the organic compound which have C double bond O, it can be aldehyde or ketone. The organic compounds which have OH group, so these are alcohols, then carboxylic acids and amines. So these organic compounds are polar. Let's first of all start from the ionic compounds. So here I've taken the example of NaCl. We already know that how NaCl is formed. The sodium atom gives one electron and changes into any positive ion and that electron is gained by the chlorine atom and it becomes chloride ion. The interaction between the sodium ion and the chloride ion is called the ionic bonding. In the crystal structure of NaCl, there is an alternate arrangement of the ions. This kind of arrangement basically decreases the repulsion between the ions and it makes the compound stable. And we also know how does a water molecule look like. Water molecule has one oxygen atom which is covalently bonded to two hydrogen atoms. As oxygen is more electronegative than hydrogen, that is why the oxygen gets a partial negative charge and the, both the hydrogens have a partial positive charge. Now when the NaCl is dissolved in water, the NaCl dissociates into sodium ion and the chloride ion. Because of the attraction between the sodium positive ion and the partial negative charge of the oxygen of water molecule, the particulate model of NaCl solution looks like this, where the sodium ion is surrounded by the oxygen atoms of the water molecule and the chloride ion is surrounded by the hydrogen atoms of the water molecule. So the interactions between the sodium ion and the chloride ion is salute-salute interactions and the interaction between the water molecule and the ions is the solute-solvent interactions. So this is how the model looks like. This was about the ionic compounds. Now let's see about the covalent compounds which do not dissociate in water. So I have taken the example of sugar molecule. Sugar molecule is a covalent molecule which has carbon, oxygen and hydrogen atoms. Here also the oxygen atom is present which is more electronegative than carbon as well as hydrogen. That is why the oxygens get a partial negative charge and the hydrogens get a partial positive charge in the sugar molecule. Due to this again there is an interaction between the partial 
positive charge of sugar molecule and the partial negative charge of the water molecule. There is also an interaction between the partial negative charge of sugar molecule and partial positive charge of the water molecule. So this kind of interaction can be represented by this model. Now this is a very important property of the solubility. The property is like dissolves like. What is the meaning of like dissolves like? This statement means that the polar compounds are soluble in polar solvents and the non-polar compounds are soluble in non-polar solvents. For example, if we talk about methanol in water, methanol and water both are polar. So that is why they will dissolve. On the other hand, hexane is a non-polar compound. So that is why it will not dissolve in water because water is a polar compound. So you can see here that the methanol is an alcohol and that is why it is polar and the hexane is an alkane. So that is why it is non-polar. But the hexane dissolves in toluene because hexane and toluene both are non-polar. But water does not dissolve in toluene because water is polar and the toluene is non-polar. So again, toluene is an alkene and that is why it is non-polar. On the basis of the groups which are present in the molecule, we can determine that the compound is polar or non-polar. And we need to keep one thing in mind that the polar dissolves in polar and the non-polar dissolves in non-polar solvents. Now let's see why don't oil and water mix so we know that water is a polar molecule and in water the molecules are densely packed because it is a liquid whereas oil is made up of non-polar molecules so non-polar molecule will not dissolve in polar molecules because like dissolves like so this is the reason that oil and water don't mix now let's see how the intermolecular forces play a role in the solubility. I told you that the polar molecules are soluble in polar solvents. In polar molecules, the intermolecular forces are dipole-dipole attraction. So when a polar solute is dissolved in polar solvent, then the attraction between the solute and solvent molecule is the dipole-dipole attraction, which is not present when we dissolve unlike compounds. That is, if we dissolve non-polar molecule in polar solvent, then this type of attraction will not be present. In the case of non-polar molecules, we know that non-polar molecules are soluble in non-polar solvents. So what is the intermolecular force in non-polar molecules? It is London dispersion attraction as this type of attraction is present in both solute as well as solvent this leads to solubility of non-polar molecules in non-polar solvents these intermolecular forces also determine that polar molecules and non-polar molecules do not mix if you want to know more about intermolecular forces i'll put the link you can watch the topic the learning objective of the topic was explain the relationship between the solubility of ionic and molecular compounds in aqueous and non-aqueous solvents and the intermolecular interactions between the particles. So in this video, I talked about the solubility of ionic compounds in aqueous solvent, for example, NaCl and I also talked about the molecular compounds in aqueous solvent. I talked about the dissolving of sugar in water. Apart from that, I also talked about the non aqueous solvents, for example, in hexane, in toluene, and also I told you that why does water doesn't mix with oil. I also talked about the intermolecular interactions between the particles which explain their solubility. Please like and subscribe to the channel Log Iota and press the bell icon.